Hello everyone, my name is Shelby and this is the series where I reveal what is inside these mystery pottery molds I found on Gumtree. Well hello there, this is mystery mold 77 of the molds I bought from Gumtree. So I've got two molds today and six spots to fill up in total. The reason I have two molds is one of them I've wanted to do for a while. I've been really curious and the other day I was doing some cleaning and I found a matching number for it. I knew that it had a pair because it has 389 and then two dots next to it, which means it has a, a matching mold. And I found the matching mold and I was like, I'm doing it. I'm doing this one. I was really excited about it. So I poured it up. I am getting feelings about this one. I don't know if you can get feelings about it. I'm feeling littered things. I'm feeling lids to little pots. I open it up to reveal this gorgeous, I can't, they're just so cute. A little duck chicken and bunny trinket pot. They are so gorgeous. So as I said before, I could tell these went together because of those two dots, 389. It's a dog holiday mold from 1984 and it does have a permanent inscription of animal boxes on it. So I found the little like doodahs, not the tops, the bottoms. And I was like, animal boxes? These are just plain things. What are the animals that go with the box? Um, I don't know, does a box constitute a closed vessel or does it? Or, or is this more of a trink? I call this a trinket dish. Anyway, I was just like, I, I need to find the animals. What are the animals? I found the 389 and I immediately did it straight away. So here I am trimming up all the excess. Uh, because this was my first pour, I accidentally poured it too thick, but I just trimmed that away. But the rest of the pours were fine. The lids fit really nicely, nice and snug in them. I did notice that they only kind of go one way because they're almost more of an egg shape. Like it's really hard to see here, but one of the edges, one of the ends is a little bit more narrow let's talk about what we're painting on them this time I decided to do a base of a pastel color of yellow blue and pink and I am gonna do some florals I know <laughs> everyone gets a bit cross with me when I'm always doing florals but I like them okay I'm gonna do some florals this time I decided that the florals weren't going to be my typical style instead of doing florals that are really precise, making sure that I've got my underglaze on nice and thick so it shows up, making sure all my lines are clear cut, easy to read, uh, really bold shapes. I decide I'm gonna do this sort of brushwork wherever the paint goes, it goes, and trying not to fix where my brush stroke went too much and just letting them speak for themselves. And the reason I wanted to do that is just to give myself some allowance to not be such a perfectionist with my flower work and also to allow myself to learn more about the underglaze medium. I've learned so much over the years, but just allowing myself to let it be not one color and let it have some transparency in it in a floral pattern. I think I've for the last few years, I've been working so hard to get such a clear cut dark color on all my work that I don't often allow it to just exist in a really fluid transparent way to allow the brush strokes to speak for themselves i had this somewhat of a vision of what the pattern was going to look like in the end it's probably hard to see right now what i'm building up because at the moment there's all these brush dabs on there but i add all these little dabs to make a bigger picture i guess it almost has an impressionist feel of me just sort of adding these colors and making your mind and think it is what it is <laughs> I mean it's more straight to the point of this of the shape but in reality that's what I'm doing I'm making these blobs and then I'm adding more blobs to make more details on the blobs <laughs> which I'm that sounds like a really bad way of explaining impressionist art it's actually really beautiful but that is essentially what I'm doing and as I was reflecting on this week, I realized that it was also paying a bit of a tribute and a node to the Japanese style calligraphy pottery painting, which was where big calligraphy paint brushes were used to add these bright pigments of color and florals. And you often see
see them in op shops today. It's those ones, they always say made in Japan on the bottom. Some also are made in Korea. So I don't know, I have to do my research on the history of all that. But these beautiful brush strokes where it's got this transparency in the brush stroke where it just fades from one color to the next making this ombre effect and it's just oh it's so stunning i just love all pottery i just think it's the best anyway this is what i am i guess paying homage to in a way and also allowing myself to build skills because that's all i'm doing every single week learning new things learning new molds but I must say that this mold, when it comes down to it, is why I do this series. This just makes my heart flutter because it is such a beautiful piece to work with because of the flat surface and beautiful design. It's so tasteful. I love that it has so much potential to use the top parts of the animal, the bottom part. You could do the animals all in gold and then do the bottom a glaze. You could do just the bottom, this cool pattern work. You could do the animals really detailed. Like the potential for this piece just makes me so happy. And the fact that it is aged so well. I talk about this in a lot of the videos but when a mold ages well it just gives me such a good feeling my admiration for this mold has turned from oh it's so cute to oh it's so cute like a aggressive cuteness just because i love it so much to finish the design off i've used a color in the floral pattern work to just add some little features on the animals and i'm also painting the eyes i feel like you could do them so detailed i think the shape more lends itself to a really simplified version of the animal but I think this is so adaptable to whatever you like I'm just doing it nice and simple because the bottom's so busy and I feel like it needs a bit more negative space in the design so these ones were actually really tricky to glaze because the lip of the lid sits so far into the dish it was going to touch and the glaze was going to like melt together and I was actually really worried so I fire with the lids on now because we discovered through this series that when you fire them together they actually shrink together of course with firing them together there is the risk that the glaze could be touching on both the lid and the base which could cause them to fuse together and remain stuck so let's hold our fingers crossed and let's go on this journey of figuring out which ones have glued and which ones have Ooh. not. That is always such a scary and big relief overnight. I'm literally praying that nothing sticks together and then to have them all pop off, it's just so good. One of them was a little bit tricky there. I don't know if you heard me go, oh no, <laughs> my heart was sinking because it took so long to get that lid off. Here are the finished results. I love these so much. I think I am very, very much in love with the chicken though, especially. I think I have a fond soft spot to a yellow and orange color palette. I do like the blue. I just find that because I didn't add extra layers and I just let the brush strokes be that they were a lot more transparent than I would have liked to see compared to like on the chicken where they were very vibrant and popped so much. But maybe that's more a comment on the background color I chose. The pink is also good, but yeah, again, I just oh, I love the yellow. So nice. Now, one thing that doesn't happen very often is this week I actually had a piece at every stage of the pottery process and I wanted to show it to you because sometimes I do take it for granted and often you don't see the shrinkage and how much they shrink from start to finish. 
and also you can see the color transformation because that is the exact same colors and now what it looks like it's so cool to see i thought i'd just include that given i had the opportunity this week with multiple stages now i did some reflecting on what these could be used for with the discussion of a very lovely friend who suggested that maybe they would be perfect for jam, cream and butter for a little scone session. And I just love that idea. I was already so obsessed with these pizzas. So what did I do? I went out and I got some jam, cream and butter. I did cheat. I didn't have time to make real cream uh, and I didn't have time to make real scones either. So don't come for me. Anyway, I went out and this is just for the content. So you can see what I'm envisioning. I wanted to show Show you the whole vibe so I got my fake cream my jam I pop my butter in each pot and how cute is this I just am squealing I ah, I just don't know how to express in more words how much I love this I think that this just adds such a quirky little element to a little scone date oh I, I mean, you could do this with any type of snack. I just felt it was particularly country orientated with the farmland animals that scones was just the perfect option for it. The best part is the ceramic will keep everything cool as well. So good. Thanks to Baker's Delight for having scones available today. <laughs> anyway here they are let me know what you think of these in the comments are you as madly deeply in love with these as i am and here is your sneak peek for the next reveal